good afternoon students this is b side about telangana model schools matampalli today we shall discuss topic from 12th lesson that is democratic and nationalistic revolutions today our topic is unification of germany and italy and how the people revolted against the rulers and how the form of the government has changed in both the germany and italy is it a democratic revolution or nationalistic revolution or both after discussion you can easily understand about the nature of the revolution first of all see democratic revolution is for the people's power it means it may be against the monarchs or the aristocrats or the pope whatever the government that is against the people or the peasants or the ordinary people in the country as you know you all already discussed about a glorious revolution american revolution and french revolution and all at the time of the unification of germany and italy if you see this is in the 19th century in the 19th century all over the world especially europe the revolutionary movements started all over europe in all the parts because of the empires all the empires roman empire ottoman empire or the turkish empire so many empires ruled and the boundaries redrawn there was no fixed boundary for any nation or country it depends upon the victorious kings so that we are going to discuss in this uh, topic today let me explain you showing the ppts you observe the ppts that i explain one by one see children this today's topic the uh, unification of germany till 19th century germany was divided into many small kingdoms before that also if you see go through the history it was a part of a holy roman empire from ancient days to a medieval age if you go through history it was this area the german is under the control of the holy roman empire and after in the beginning of the 19th century if you see in 1806 napoleon bonaparte formed a rhine confederation means he conquered all the parts of uh, germany and he formed a union still then there are the small kingdoms all these kingdoms were conquered by napoleon bonaparte and he formed a new federation that is called uh, rhine confederation because of this all the people were under one rule for the first time in history especially small kingdoms were under the control of uh, the one ruler that is france ruler uh, napoleon so as a result what happened here the nationalistic ideas were formed in german as all the people were come to 
under one rule there was a bond a, a, a kind of bond developed among the people in this uh, area and if you uh, see before and after uh, napoleon conquer these uh, areas people especially some section of the people are motivating the uh, motivating the uh, people against the existing rule they were liberals traditionalists and patriots they have been trying for a change political and social change here you see unification may be both political and social unification so after some years the napoleon defeated by the european powers this is you see holy roman empire and after this uh, uh, rain confederation he formed uh, napoleon and uh, this is vienna congress after defeating napoleon all the victorious nations had a meeting in vienna and they discussed about the future of this uh, small kingdoms which were under the control of uh, napoleon what happened here you see vienna congress revived the kingdoms as earlier as uh, small kingdoms and also a customs union called julovarian uh, formed trade rules were formed for economic cooperation among these kingdoms it created a feeling of unity in germans you see students after conquering napoleon a, a kind of uh, unity was uh, uh, inculcated among the people in this area and also this uh, jovelerin economic uh, uh, activities for economic activities and economic cooperation in new uh, new uh, uh, society was uh, no organization economic organization was uh, formed with this also a kind of uh, oneness among the people inculcated it means the nationalistic feelings were inculcated among the uh, people you see here uh, europe after the congress of vienna so once again the boundaries you can observe before picture and here some variations are there it is uh, uh, the boundaries are redrawn again uh, in germany all the small kingdom they are uh, revived and this jewelry for uh, as a customs union uh, new trade rules were formed and a kind of economic cooperation among the small kingdoms was also uh, formed and for th this is a kind of a first step that enrooted to political unity the first time how the uh, process of unification started how the process of unification in germany started with the formation of the this uh, jolivarian uh, union also it indirectly helped the uh, people and the leaders that uh, those who are uh, motivating the people it is also indirectly supported and it was also one of the reason for a kind of bond among the uh, german people here is see the prussia how the process of uh, unification started from here uh, you can clearly observe uh, among the uh, areas among the small kingdoms here uh, if you observe all uh, uh, kingdoms uh, prussia is one of the uh, uh, strongest uh, uh, state uh, among these uh, small kingdoms means the prussian ruler uh, is uh, a, a native ruler and uh, here you see uh, the people in germany uh, and all the small kingdoms also uh, uh, conquered by uh, this uh, uh, ruler king william 1 means the prussia is the uh, state a strong state uh, which uh, uh, initiated the unification of uh, germany under the leadership of the prussian rulers and especially the king uh, william is uh, the uh, person who started the unification of uh, germany and he see here some difference you can find here uh, with other uh, kingdoms here william is uh, somewhat uh, uh, liberal 
and uh, here you see always the kings were the key role or the people were the key role for any change in if you see if you observe in case of uh, um, france or um, england or in america uh, here the movement is somewhat different here the movement started by the army uh, chief chief of the army and the uh, uh, minister here you see the bismarck is uh, the chancellor he is appointed by uh, uh, william one he is the king and he is no he is not directly involved uh, in the uh, wars or in the process of unification he appointed a person who is capable of doing this uh, unification he is uh, uh, bismarck otto von bismarck he is the key person who initiated and completed the unification of uh, germany and here the bismarck as a chancellor what is the importance and what is the speciality about uh, this uh, person uh, bismarck is the prime minister of uh, that uh, uh, kingdom uh, bismarck made possible the unification of germany uh, with three body, battles battle with denmark battle with austria and france so here what are the main obstacles for the unification of germany these three kingdoms are the uh, obstacles one is the denmark and the austria and prussia so he waged wars against these three states uh, and lost he achieved uh, uh, unification he fought for seven years uh, with the uh, other kings and here you see his policies blood and iron policy what is the meaning of blood and iron policy that means not the bloodshed iron means not the iron here the blood means the youth especially the younger generation whether it is the army or in the movement if the movement led by the young people then we can easily achieve our goal that is the uh, ideology of uh, bismarck and so very strong how to lead the movement uh, is uh, very important for that he encouraged the young blood in the army and also in the uh, movement uh, in the process of uh, unification of germany this is the meaning of blood and iron policy and one more thing he uh, initiated one um, uh, new rule uh, compulsory military services every citizen has to uh, extend his support towards the nation uh, at the time of uh, war so it is uh, uh, compulsory military service and he strengthened the military power also nearly 40 million to 50 guns 60 million uh, army was increased at the time of uh, bismarck so with that strength only we can uh, achieve the unification that is the ideology of uh, uh, bismarck and he isolated austria poland and uh, france means he had uh, friendly relations with uh, one nation and he fought against the other nation and one by one he defeated all the uh, three kingdoms he roused first of all um, uh, when he is uh, uh, trying to Uh, attack the Den Denmark. What uh, he has done here is he he roused nationalistic feelings in Prussians. He took the issue of uh, Schleswig and Holstein. Students uh, try to remember these uh, two uh, very very important reasons: Schleswig and uh, Holstein. This is the first step and first war uh, for the unification of uh, Germany. He took this uh, issue and he inculcated a feeling of uh, nationalism uh, among the uh, prussian people and the uh, king uh, and all the sections of the society these two states uh, lie in the north of the germany these are the very very rich uh, in um, natural resources and minerals and all uh, as a result uh, he wanted to uh, strengthen his economy and for that purpose uh, he wanted to occupy these uh, two regions these Uh, really the, actually these are two reasons are the independent states for 400 years even though the germans were, and, and the government and the people were interested to um, add this uh, into uh, the, their fold the german people wanted these two states to come within its uh, fold with the help of austria bismarck uh, defeated denmark first he initiated the uh, war and uh, he attacked the denmark with the help of uh, austria he extended a uh, friendly relations with austria and he get support 
from Austria and he defeated Denmark. You see here, President Denmark war, picture how they uh, fought and uh, defeated uh, the Denmark uh, and uh, how they occupied these uh, two uh, regions, uh, Schleswig and uh, Holstein. And uh, one more here, the next one, uh, second battle that he waged against the Austria. This is a uh, astro prussian war with the help of Russia, France and Italy. He got uh, the uh, help from these uh, three nations. On 3rd July 1866, war uh, declared and he started a war with the help of the uh, France and Italy and uh, Russia. Uh, at last, he defeated uh, Austria at uh, Sadova. Try to remember this uh, uh, place. At uh, Sadova, he defeated the Austrian army. Prussia annexed Venetia, Schleswig, Holstein, Hanover, Hesse Kozel, Hesse Dom, Stott. Frankfurt. These all are the uh, states, uh, independent sta states that were uh, uh, in uh, Austria at the time. After defeating Austria, he captured all these areas. And uh, uh, one, uh, one more year, uh, southern states also are there. They were Bavaria, Baden, Wurttemberg, Hesse Darmstadt. These are the, uh, these declared as uh, independent uh, uh, states. And after that, you see here, astro prussian war. This is the battlefield uh, um, between the Austria um, and uh, uh, Prussia. And uh, next one, the uh, lost uh, uh, against the France, france prussian war. Napoleon III demanded for companies. Now this uh, war started. At the time of war against Austria, he sought the uh, help from uh, Napoleon, means uh, France. And he gave a promise, vague promise. And uh, 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 on that basis, uh, Napoleon demanded compensation as he was uh, uh, weakening his government and uh, France uh, uh, weakened at the time uh, with the uh, wars against the other uh, kingdoms. Uh, here, he demanded compensation from the uh, Prussian government. So, uh, but uh, Bismarck did not agree and uh, even the king also did not agree uh, to pay any compensation to um, France. Uh, they rejected. And uh, uh, one more thing here, uh, at the same time, in 1863, one uh, Spanish issue was there. What is the Spanish issue? Here, the succession of uh, uh, rulers, uh, it was uh, under the control of uh, uh, France, uh, uh, that uh, Spain and control. Uh, uh, the rulers uh, uh, at that time, Isabella is the uh, ruler of uh, uh, Spain, and uh, the people fed fed up with the uh, rule of the uh, present rulers, uh, Isabella, and they wanted to replace uh, Leopold. And uh, uh, France uh, objected this because of uh, uh, the Spanish government uh, uh, was uh, uh, under the control or the um, uh, supervision of uh, the France government. And this issue, the issue of compensation and the issue of uh, Spanish, so all these were uh, um, uh, represented to Bismarck and who is uh, on uh, warfare and he was uh, uh, in uh, Berlin at that time. Uh, from Ames to uh, Berlin, uh, the king sent a telegram this is called the Ames Telegram. What is uh, uh, the uh, message in this uh, uh, telegram uh, that uh, uh, William uh, King sent to Bismarck? Was manipulated by Bismarck. And that uh, manipulation is to create the differences between the people of uh, um, uh, Prussia and uh, uh, France. Not only uh, between the governments, even between uh, uh, the People also created a kind of confusion and create, uh, manipulated the uh, telegram and uh, uh, see you know, he, the Bismarck, uh, uh, tried to uh, mo mobilize the people against the France. In that way, he succeeded and he uh, declared war against France and that uh, war continued for six uh, months. After six months, uh, uh, Napoleon uh, defeated and uh, he was captured uh, with nearly one lakh uh, 
uh, army and he surrendered and uh, at last uh, they had a treaty uh, to end the war that is the treaty is called uh, treaty of uh, frankfurt and in the treaty uh, he had two reasons alsace and lorraine these are also very very important reasons uh, uh, in that area they were uh, added to germany and uh, at last uh, 1871 this uh, unification uh, process uh, was completed and the uh, franco prussian war also uh, ended with this uh, unification is uh, uh, completed um, by the um, bismarck and the next one is uh, unification of uh, italy and this uh, subtopic here and the topic in uh, 19th century italy was divided into seven states sardinia fidman ruler uh, ruled by native prince if you observe the seven states all the states were under the control of the foreign rulers there are some uh, some some uh, some, uh, some areas are under the control of austria and some under the control of the uh, spain in that way many states were there uh, all these states were under the control of the foreign rulers but here the only one state and uh, rich and powerful state that is uh, sardinia fidman that was ruled by the native prince means the italian native prince was, was uh, ruling that uh, uh, area and uh, uh, this uh, if you observe uh, three areas the italy we can divide uh, uh, into three areas for uh, uh, understanding uh, how the process uh, started and completed the unification in the northern uh, italy austria rulers austrian um, kings uh, habsburg rulers kingdom uh, was the ruling and in the south uh, uh, spain that is the uh, bourbon uh, kings were ruling and central italy it was under the control of uh, pope you can see here clearly children here you see uh, from south to north if you observe uh, venetia uh, sardinia fidman lombardy parma modena tuscany and papal states here kingdoms of uh, two sicilies this is the picture this is uh, this has to be uh, unified this is the process so how this unification started and who started the unification of italy and how this uh, unification completed uh, we shall discuss here to see one area under the uh, bourbon uh, kings these are the uh, relatives of uh, the uh, uh, spain and uh, indirectly uh, france uh, it was under the control of uh, france and spain and here habsburg burg kingdom it uh, is under the control of uh, austria means these are the austrian uh, kings and here the central part uh, pope papal states we call them as papal states they were under the control of the pope means the in those days pope has both uh, religious powers and uh, political powers and administrative powers so that uh, area rome and other uh, areas adjoining to that uh, uh, rome all are called the papal um, papal states these were under the uh, control of uh, rule here you see he is the king who was uh, ruling this area uh, sardinia and fidman emmanuel victor emmanuel ii is the king and here what are the conditions in italy italy had long history it politically broken into small uh, parts and the italian language is the one even though there are uh, some regional um, uh, uh, accents are different but the language is the same in that way a kind of bondage were there among uh, uh, all the people in uh, in these areas and here some organizations were started secret agencies are uh, functioning and they were organizing to come out from uh, the ruler from the uh, foreign rulers means here in seven states uh, there a kind of movement is going on somebody are um, uh, organizing the organizations and uh, some secret societies are so working for the um, for uh, to free from the uh, rulers and the people were uh, uh, trying to change the uh, political system here and uh, one society also formed in italy and one carbonari this is also a secret society which is fighting against the rulers 
uh, and they their uh, their way of uh, uh, thinking is uh, with uh, uh, a kind of violent methods we can change the uh, present existing government that is the uh, thinking of uh, these uh, secret agencies and the ruling elites also thinking that if we um, occupy all the uh, other states then we may have some better position in the government that is the thinking of the elites so uh, uh, overall all the sections of uh, the society are trying to change the existing system and here that king appointed a, a minister the prime minister uh, he is called uh, uh, count kavur he is the key person who initiated uh, the unification of italy and how diplomatically uh, he uh, win uh, in all the uh, battles and how he occupied uh, all the areas we can see here here organizations carbonari the secret agencies are working uh, against uh, the government uh, they are having some meetings uh, this is the picture about uh, the secret agencies and here you see another person who is kant kavur he is uh, from the government uh, side he is trying to uh, unify the italy and the other person here you see he is organizing a uh, agency he is uh, joseph uh, mazzini and he formed an organization called uh, young italy he tried for uh, republic you see uh, the change after changing the existing government what is the um, aim of the uh, movement we can uh, easily understand uh, sometimes they uh, trying to uh, replace the monarchy with the monarchy they are not uh, fighting for the democracy or Uh, other form of the government whether it is count kavur or uh, the william ii uh, their aim is uh, unification of italy but not uh, establishing a government or a democratic form of the government that is not the intention or the goal of the uh, movement uh, but here you see uh, joseph mazzini is trying for uh, republican form of the government this is uh, the organization that he started eng italy and here another person is uh, joseph gariboldi he is also uh, a key person who occupied uh, the uh, southern parts two sicilies kingdoms of two sicilies he occupied and uh, he is the key person and here you see the red shirt volunteers this is the organization run by uh, this person gariboldi uh, this is uh, his uh, red army powerful uh, thousand persons these are all uh, red shirt volunteers this uh, fought against the uh, two kingdoms and they uh, established uh, they, uh, they captured the area and they merged in uh, italy here all these uh, gariboldi and mazzini and uh, all the organization and count kavu how all these uh, uh, captured power and how they unified italy let us see here first of all fidmen sardinia he started he is the uh, ruler and first he waged a war against the austria and uh, he captured the Uh, lombardy the next uh, state to pedmen um, and sardinia he captured it uh, in the first phase and after that uh, other states here farma modena and tuscany these uh, three uh, rulers were persuaded by kind uh, kavur diplomatic uh, uh, role means he diplomatically um, occupied these uh, three uh, states farma modena and tuscany and after that here uh, gariboldi and his uh, red shirt organizations uh, were encouraged by count kavur you see here the count kavur or this uh, pedmen uh, sardinia rulers not interested to Uh, attack any 
states directly because here other side if you see the france is uh, the protector of uh, or uh, 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 under the uh, rule of the uh, france uh, emperor all these uh, are the client states we can say simply we can say client states means they are under the control of the france whether whether the france or austria if you see vienna um, venetia for example the venetia was under the control of austrian rulers and here the kingdoms of two sicilies were under the control of the france so here the count cavour not interested to directly attack uh, any of the states because the france is so powerful nation and it is uh, uh, the the strength of the uh, uh, sardinia and fidmund uh, uh, not enough to uh, to attack uh, france so france is so powerful country so with his diplomatic tactics only he uh, was able to occupy all these areas so for this uh, what he what is the diplomatic role he played for occupying this uh, two uh, kingdoms of uh, sicily here he encouraged the uh, other secret agencies secret agencies uh, of uh, gaznan mazini or this goribald so here in case of uh, these uh, kingdoms of two sicilies he encouraged the uh, um, red shirt uh, volunteers and he supported them and they as they are the secret agencies uh, they attack directly um uh, on these uh, kingdoms and they captured means uh, here you see diplomatic what is the diplomatic role of uh, this count cavour if the france is observing the development uh, in these uh, areas and he is not response directly responsible for the attack of uh, these uh, two sicilies kingdoms of two sicilies just indirectly supported so in that way only in case of lombardy only he directly attacked uh, austria with the support of uh, france and he defeated it and he occupied and after that he played a diplomatic role and with tactic uh, uh, tactical uh, role he he, he was uh, able to capture this uh, farma modena and tuscany and after that you see at last uh, these people states the people states were under the control of the uh, pope so in the uh, other parts of the world if you see the austria austria was defeated by uh, france when it was defeated by the uh, france napoleon the austrian um, army uh, to defend uh, their uh, their part in uh, venetia the army was uh, divided the austrian army was uh, divided and it was uh, it weakened and at last it uh, defeated by france then automatically the army of uh, austria withdrawn from uh, rome then this uh, this person uh, count cavour uh, simply occupied this uh, roman uh, papal states so in this way we can understand the unification of italy in three phases in the first phase uh, lombardy and uh, in the second phase farma modena and tuscany and uh, in third phase uh, uh, kingdoms of two sicilies uh, in this way at last uh, the uh, unification of uh, italy was also uh, completed and uh, it became uh, once uh, the powerful uh, nation uh, in europe uh, this is all about uh, the unification of uh, germany and the italy uh, uh, students uh, with this i uh, conclude this uh, topics both uh, germany and italy so at finally what do you understand it is not a, uh, for a democratic form of the government in germany also uh, the king was uh, uh, incarnated and uh, here also the king uh, became the emperor of uh, unified uh, italy so the only thing is here the native rulers uh, came to power and captured and under the native rulers the uh, italy people were ruled with this i conclude my talk thank you